Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to load the paper and ink in the Mitsubishi K60 die set burner. You press the open button here in the front, you slide out the printing mechanism, you pull out the tray. In the past, Mitsubishi has been very clear about where these rollers go, they're usually color coded. Unfortunately, with this new printer, they're not color coded, and you really have to look at the instructions right here. If you look at the instructions, you see that the nipples on the end of these rollers go to the right. So, we're going to put them in like so. And click into place like so. This front one's a little tricky. You've got to make sure that it's slightly to the right in order to fit in. Once you have the ink in, take up the slack and then insert it in here. The next thing you want to do is load the paper. You press this little black lever here, open it up, and this is um, something that's unusual. I've never seen this as a dice or printer. Um, like most manufacturers, it comes with this gigantic instruction sheet in 12 different languages. Um, it has your typical warnings like don't you know, use it in the shower, don't take it outside in the rain. The only thing you really have to read is this section right here. And there's a section right here that shows you how to adjust these guides. If you're using 5 by 7 paper, you want these guides pushed on the inside part right there. If you're using 4 by 6 or 6 by 8 paper, you want the guides to the outside, like so. <clears throat> the paper guides come like this. If you're using 5 by 7 paper, you're going to put these spacers on, press these white tabs, and slide them all the way in. For this demonstration, we're using 4 by 6 paper, so we don't need that. We're going to take and press these white tabs so the cork pads are retracted inside, and push this on each end here, like so. Now, I believe these ends are the same. Yes, they are. You're going to go ahead and put the roll of paper in like so. Take off the pull tab here. And then you're going to rotate this paper so that it goes in between the white rollers and the black outside tray here. You're going to roll it until you hear a beep. You just heard the beep there. So you're going to stop it, close this up, and then firmly push that into place. Once you've loaded the paper and ink, like most die sub printers, the Mitsubishi K60 will print out several test alignment sheets. And that's how you load up the printer. In the next video, I'm going to show you how this machine works. One other thing I'd like to mention that's um, shown in the instructions here that came with the printer if you're doing 6x8 paper that's really long, they actually tell you to put it on a box or a pedestal so when the paper comes out, it doesn't hit the bottom of your table and jam up the printer. Um, I don't know if it actually does that, but I thought it was kind of unusual. So I'm just doing a test 6x8 print, and I'm not putting the printer on a pedestal, and I'm seeing if it causes any issues with it jamming, like these cautionary instructions on the yellow sheet of paper say that came with the printer. Okay, so that's a 6x8 print. It cropped a little bit because I was just using the default settings, but um, it seems to um, not have any problems ejecting out, except you do notice here that this paper shard, there's actually two of them, are stuck there. I don't know if that's going to cause problems in the future, but maybe that's why they recommend putting it on a pedestal. Okay, in this next demonstration, I'm going to print out the same sample photo booth print here. It's going to make a 4x6 size here instead. And I've just perched this K60 printer vertically to see how it prints vertically. This is the first time I'm doing this, so we'll see what it does. this. It's going to print out okay. I'm going to go ahead and print another sample here. I just sent it to the printer. And we're going to turn on the timer here and see how long it actually takes.
So it takes about 15 seconds to actually spool to the printer. I'm using a Sony Tab 20 all-in-one computer. It's a Core i7 processor running at about 1.9 gigahertz. And that's about 35 seconds for it to come out altogether. About 20 seconds to print, 15 seconds to spool, and it seems to do fine in the vertical orientation. Okay, so in this next example, we're going to go ahead and put the printer on its side and see how well it prints in this configuration. One thing I noticed already is the scraps in the scrap bin have gone horizontal and actually sticking in the cutter path. So if you're going to print sideways, I recommend that you take off this printer tray and make sure that you remove these scraps every so often. The total time to print there was about 30 seconds um, from the time I hit print. So one thing I like to mention about the sideway printing is this little paper scrap doesn't fall out correctly. So after you do probably eight or nine prints, it's going to jam. So I would not recommend printing sideways. Printing horizontally like it's intended to or vertically should work fine. Next I want to go over if you ever have paper jams. If you ever have paper jams with this printer, and this is a new printer so I haven't experienced that yet, first thing you want to do is take out the roll of paper and see if there's any wrinkled parts in the paper. If there are, you want to take a pair of scissors and cut off the wrinkled or distorted part of the paper. Then you want to basically reload the paper, again putting it through the slot there between the white and the black rollers until it beeps. The other thing that can cause a, a, a paper jam is some kind of scrap piece of paper being stuck in the printer mechanism here. The best way to try to dislodge that is to take a piece of paper or take the end of the roll of paper and stick it through the slot right here. Actually, it's probably better to use the roll of paper here because it is long enough to go all the way through. You stick it through here until it goes out the front here. And it should go freely out the front. If it's not, then you have to go to jam in there. You'd have to disassemble it, like take out this screw here and take out the little piece of scrap paper. So this last test I'm going to do is we're going to print out two 2 by 6 inch photo booth strips. I'm actually just printing this thing right here. It's going to split it in half. So it's, look, it's going to look kind of funny, but we'll see how it does. Now this is mode 2, and now mode 2 sends a single file to the printer twice, and mode 1 would actually send an entire 4x6 piece of paper with an image at once and then cut it in half. Uh, mode 2 is generally better for photo booth applications because it's only sending half as much data as mode um, two, as mode 1. excuse me. So it looks like that prints well, pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Through this demonstration, what I did was first printed out a 6x8 print, and then I printed out two 4x6s, another 4x6, and then I took the paper and ink out and showed you how to dislodge it, and then I printed these 2x6 strips here. So according to Mitsubishi's uh, documentation, this thing should roll back and we should only be missing one ink blot. So it looks like we're missing one here because we only did one 2x6 strip. And over here, these are all used up, it rolled back correctly. Okay. So it looks like even though I took the paper and ink out, it rewound the ribbon to the correct spot and we didn't lose any ink. So that's pretty cool. It's better than what the specs say. In this review, I'm going to talk about the new Mitsubishi K60 die sub printer. This printer's closest competitor is the Symphonia CS2, which is a black printer to my left here. Uh, both printers are approximately the same size. The only difference is the Mitsubishi is about 4 inches longer in the back. Um, I think altogether it's about 17 or about 18 inches by the time you plug in the power cord into the back. Um, this makes it a little bit bigger and a little bit uh, less convenient to use, but it does have some cool features in it in that it can do 
two by six print strips, four by six print strips, and six by eight prints all in the same roll of paper, so you don't have to change out paper. It also can do five by seven and three and a half inch prints, and it weighs about the same as a competitor here. Um, it's a little more expensive, about $800, but I did get this on sale from Photo Club Inc. for about $750. Um, other places like Imaging Spectrum, Photo Finishing Services will match that price to $750. And Symphonia is $750 as well, so that's about the same price. Looking at this printer here, I'm going to unplug it for a second. It has a flat front right here on the back of it. It has um, your typical air vents. It has your on-off switch here and your power cord here. The power cord that comes with it is a right angle plug, but it does extend about a half inch to make this printer even longer than it already is. The USB port is in the very top of the printer. The bottom of the printer is pretty plain, as well as the sides, which just have air vents. This printer can uh, be mounted either horizontally, like you would expect in a photo booth, but it can also be mounted vertically. The thing that makes this nice for vertical orientation is you can construct a photo booth that is very slim. One thing that makes this possible is if you look at the inside of this photo booth, a uh, photo booth printer, and you open up the printer section here, you'll notice on the sides here, it has these roller mechanisms here that hold the top portion of the paper in place even if the unit is inverted. So these rollers right here that are white um, engage this section of the roller here and keep it steady pretty much no matter what position it is. In comparison, the Symphonia CS2 also has the USB ports and the power ports on the back. The sides are pretty much the same, and it loads paper and ink in a similar fashion. However, this printer um, does not have the option to do 6x8 and 4x6 prints on the same piece of paper. If you want a competitive edge and offer bigger prints in your competition, like a 6x8 size, I'd recommend the Mitsubishi K60 printer. If you're looking for something that is a little more compact, then I'd recommend the Sinfonia CS2. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions, please ask below.